have a filming buddy for today's video, which of course is my January reading wrap up. So stay tuned to see what books I read in January with this cute little guy. Hi everyone, it is Samantha and I hope you guys are having a lovely day today. I am here as I said in the intro to tell you guys all the books that I read in January. I've actually started out my reading year pretty dang well. I read a lot of good books last month, a lot of books that I really, really enjoyed and I can't wait to share with you guys. But before we do that, I'm actually going to share with you guys some of my reading statistics from the month of January because this is one of my favorite parts of my reading wrap ups and hopefully it is for you guys too. So in the month of January I ended up reading a total of five books, two of which I started in December but I finished in January and the other three I started and finished in January. For a total of 2006 pages which averages to about 65 pages a day and about 400 pages a book. Of the books that I read, one was a YA historical fiction, one was science fiction, and the other three were all fantasy. In terms of book format, 40% of the books that I read were actually hardcover and the rest were all trade paperbacks. These are actually two of my favorite book formats to read, so I was very happy. In terms of the length of the books that I read, two of them were between three and 400 pages, one was between two and 300 pages, one was between four and 500 pages, and the other one was between seven and 800 pages. In terms of where I acquired the book itself, one was an ARC, two of them were gifts that I received from other people, and two of them were ones that I purchased myself. And finally, in terms of star rating, 60% of the books that I read were five stars and the rest were four stars. So it was definitely a very solid reading month for me. I pretty much enjoyed all of the books that I read, which is great since last year, I didn't actually have that many like awesome books. So I'm already making up for it in 2018. So the first book that I finished in January was A Lot Like Christmas by Connie Willis. This was a short story collection that featured a bunch of different science fiction Christmassy stories by Connie Willis. I received this as a Christmas gift from Thomas from SSF 180. So thank you, Thomas. And I started it in December, but I didn't finish it until January obviously, hence the reason it's in this video, but I actually really enjoyed it. I had a lot of really fun Christmas stories. There were only a couple that I really didn't care for and that I thought was just like okay or kind of creepy, but overall I found myself really enjoying this book. I have another Christmas collection by a bunch of science fiction and fantasy authors and I actually prefer this one over that one. So I definitely recommend picking this one up next year if you're looking for kind of some SFF themed Christmas stories because this one was a lot of fun. So I ended up reading this book five out of five stars, though there were a couple of stories that I didn't much care for. Overall, the vast majority I really did enjoy and this is one that I would definitely pick up year over year. So that's why I gave it five stars. I also want to start including in these videos my book out statistics. Book out is a reading app that you can get through iOS. I don't believe it's available on Android right now, unfortunately, but basically it's just to track your reading progress. So you hit start. When you start reading your book, it tracks how long you've read your book because when you're done, you hit stop and then you log the amount of pages that you read. It's really interesting. I like seeing how long it takes me to read certain books and it's just a kind of a fun alternative way to keep track of your reading aside from Goodreads. So for this book, a lot like Christmas, it took me four hours and 46 minutes to read this book, which is about 45 pages an hour. And the most minutes that I read in a day was 53 for this book in particular. So there's some fun reading time statistics for you for this one. The next book that I finished in January was the other book that I started in December. And this is actually a reread for me. And that is The Red Knight by Miles Cameron. I wanted to reread this book because I wanted to finish out this entire Trader Sun Cycle series. But I couldn't remember a lot of what happened in this book. I mean, I remembered a lot, but this book is very dense. There's a lot of characters. There's a lot of things that happen. And it's really easy to kind of forget the things that happened. So I kind of wanted to reread it to refresh my memory. And I'm really glad I did because while I remembered a lot of the major events, there were some small details I ended up forgetting that became important later. So I did finish this one in January. I had about mm, 400 pages I think I read this month and I read the other 200 pages in December. So the vast majority of this book I did read in January. This book was just as good as I remember. I absolutely adored it. This book I would say is loosely based on Arthurian legend and it definitely takes place in kind of an alternate version of our own world. I would say between the 13th to 15th centuries is what I would guess as the ballpark for when this book is supposed to take place. So it's very clearly our world. You know, you have Catholicism and the places that they reference either are exactly exactly like places in our own world are spelled slightly differently or, or old names that are for places in our own world like the Gauls are very clearly French and Alba is very clearly the UK island so it's very much reminiscent of our own world. And this book follows many different characters but the primary focal point of this story is the Red Knight, the main character of Gabriel. So he's very much the Mordred character but, I, but what I like about this book is that Unlike Mordred just being completely evil and his mother and other forces kind of using them as their own tool, 
this character, the Red Knight, Gabriel, kind of takes his fate in his own hands and he's like, no, I'm going to do my own thing. I don't want to be a bad person. I kind of want to help people more than being used by people to do evil. So the story follows this character of the Red Knight as he leads his band of mercenaries, his own band that he formed, to protect the convent monastery of Lysenkarak, who the creatures of the wild are trying to take by siege. So in this story, a lot of people in this book have the ability to wield power, including the creatures of the wild. So the wild is basically this part of this world that all of these kind countries kind of border against, particularly the country of Alba. And the wild is full of magical creatures and beings. So you have like demons and dragons and wyverns and boglins and like elfin creatures called Urks. And it's just really, really interesting. And they're being led by this main sorcerer who used to be a man named Thorn. And he's trying to lay siege and capture Lysenkara, which is this convent and this place of power. And the nuns have hired the Red Knight to protect them and defeat the evil sorcerer of Thorn. So that is the basic gist of this plot. You follow as many different characters, the principal characters I said being the Red Knight, and you have a lot of different plot revelations and all everybody's kind of interconnected in very interesting ways. And the magic system in this book is also very interesting as people can take power from two different sources, one being kind of nature, which is how all of the creatures of the wild gain their power, and the other way to gain power is through light itself. And those who have the ability to wield power, they kind of wield it from their memory palace, so they'll like enter their memory palace in their mind and they're able to like live in the ethereal, as they call it, and kind of cast their power from there. So like the magic system is very, very interesting and detailed. It's probably one of the most unique magic systems I've ever read. And it's just really fascinating. So I really, really enjoyed this book. It was just as good as the second time around and I love it to bits. So I ended up rating this book five out of five stars. I gave the world building four and a half out of five stars. You don't get that much world building and history in this book you do in the later books, but not so much in this one. So it does lack a little bit in that area. I give it five out of five stars for character I give it five out of five stars for plot and five out of five stars for the writing itself. I really, really enjoy Miles Cameron's writing and just the overall story is excellent. It is a little bit dense, so it is definitely a slow burn and it can definitely take you a while to read it, but I definitely recommend it because the payoff is great. In the last few hundred pages where all these revelations are happening, these battles and things, is just so fascinating, interesting, and engaging. So according to the Book Out app, it actually took me 10 hours to read this book. So as I said, it's definitely a little bit of a slower read, but I really enjoyed it. Apparently my reading speed was 39 pages an hour, which feels really slow, but you know, I'm gonna go with it. It was definitely still worth it as a read, even if it did take me forever to get through. The next book that I picked up was actually a book that I received from Tor in exchange for my free and honest review, which you will get today. And that was Blood and Sand by C.V. Wick. This is a historical fiction YA novel that takes place about the time of the fall of Rome. And it follows our main character of Achia, who is basically the queen, the princess, if you will, of Thrace, which is a warrior nation of people, but they are conquered by the Romans and she is taken to Rome to be sold as a slave. She is purchased by the kind of evil Roman upperclassman, Timius, who basically purchased her to be the consort of his famed gladiator that he owns is Anthus. So the story is kind of a Spartacus retelling with Atia being the Spartacus character. I thought it was kind of an interesting twist. Uh, C.V. Wick actually had at the end of the novel kind of the history and legend of Spartacus, how nobody even knew if he was male or female, what his real name was, if that's what he called himself, or if that's what other people called him. And so she kind of took that and ran with it, which I thought was really quite interesting. C.V. Wick is actually a historian, so there's a lot of interesting historical aspects of this novel, which I quite enjoyed. Plus I've always enjoyed reading stories that take place kind of in ancient times because it's always been an era of history that I find very fascinating. So the story follows Ashia. She's basically trying to navigate her new world as a slave and trying to win her freedom. She also ends up kind of becoming closer to Xanthus than she first expected that she would. So the story is told from both the perspective of Ashia as well as from Xanthus and I have to say I actually prefer the Ashia perspective more than Xanthus and I didn't really much feel the blooming romance between the two characters. I feel like the novel would have been stronger had there been no romantic aspects to it. So that was probably why I knocked this, this book down a star. So I ended up rating this book four out of five stars. I gave the writing five out of five stars. I gave the characters four out of five stars. I gave the plot four out of five stars and the world building and the world that it just took place in 
four and a half out of five stars. So the, my main complaint with this book was the romantic aspect. It just felt very forced. I wasn't fully invested in it and committed to the fact that these two characters really had feelings for each other and I feel like it kind of weakened the plot a little bit for me personally. What I did enjoy about this book was that I did feel it was well written. I liked how she tied in real world historical events into the narration of the story. There's something very exciting that happens at the end which is a very well-known historical event which I thought was quite clever of her to include. She did say that she took some liberties with the timeline so there's some things that probably happened 100 or 200 years apart from each other but you know it's fiction. You can take some liberties with that kind of a thing. But overall, I really enjoyed this book and ended up rating it four out of five stars. So my book out statistics for this book were that I read this book in five hours and 10 minutes, which was about 62 pages an hour, which is pretty impressive. I think this might be the fastest book that I've read this year. Well, the next book I show might be fastest. We'll soon see. And the most minutes that I read in a day was 185. So this was definitely a quick read. I read it really quickly. It was definitely a fun book and definitely a page turn. So all around a decent book. And the next book that I finished in the month of January is one that I'm sure everybody has seen in everyone's channels because it's very popular right now and that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. So I went into this book expecting absolute trash because I really don't much care for Holly Black. I read her Hold This Girl in Cold Town and I hated it so much so I wasn't expecting much from this book but my curiosity was peaked so I picked it up and I was pleasantly surprised. And I don't know if I ended up enjoying this book so much because I was expecting to come out hating it but here we are and I really did enjoy this book. <laughs> so this book follows the main character of Jude. Jude is one of three sisters who reside in the land of the fairy. When the story starts out you see the very tragic beginning of these three sisters journey together as their mother and father are killed by a fairy prince because he used to be married to their mother and he is a true father of their oldest sister Vivian. So he ends up seeking his revenge because she leaves him with another man and he ends up killing both their mother and their father. So the twins Jude and Taryn and Vivian are taken by this fairy prince to be raised in the land of the Fae. The story is a fast forwarding about a decade. At this point Jude and Taryn are 17. Vivian is about 20 years old. The story finds them, the three of them, basically dealing with the trauma of their past and trying to make the best of their situation in very different ways. Which I thought was kind of cool. I like the sisterly bond between them even though they were handling their situation in very different ways. Taryn trying to basically marry her way into being accepted by the Fae. Jude trying to fight and force everybody to accept her for who she is and then Vivian who just wants to escape it and return back to the land of the humans. So even though they all are kind of dealing with it in very different ways they're all still kind of there for each other and supporting one another and I kind of like seeing that sisterly bond. So the story is primarily told from Jude's perspective. Jude as I said is basically trying to force everybody in the land of the fae to respect her because of course people look down on them because they are human and in order to do that she ends up becoming the spy and assassin for one of the princes of the royal family and she kind of becomes embroiled in the politics of the situation. Fighting against the youngest prince Cardin who basically leads a band of bullies basically trying to fight her way in, into finding her own place in the land of the fae. So as I said I really ended up enjoying this book. It was a solid four star read for me. It was a page turner. I was invested in the story I wanted to know what was going to happen. I found all of the characters to be pretty interesting and fairly complex and I just really enjoyed it. So I ended up rating the story in the plot itself four out of five stars. I would give the writing four out of five stars. I would give the characters four out of five stars and the world building three and a half out of five stars. I feel like we could have had a little bit more world building. I would definitely say that some of the negatives of this book would be the lack of world building. I just didn't have a very good grasp of what the land of the Fae looked like, what it encompassed. There wasn't very much history given. I definitely would have liked more detail in terms of this world that they're residing in. I also yeah, I'd also have to say one of my least favorite characters was Jude herself. She thought that she was a pretty dang awesome spy and I'm like, dude, you suck. I don't know if it's because I've read a lot of fantasy novels that feature spies, thieves, assassins, and so I'm just used to like, I don't know, people having some level of skill where there actually are decent spy, assassins, thieves, but she kind of sucked and she was always like, I'm good at this and I'm like, dude, no you're not. So sometimes she would kind of annoy me because she was a little bit cocky, but I still <laughs> overall enjoyed it. I don't know, I liked it. I thought it was quite entertaining. Also, I'd like to highlight that there is diversity in the story. The oldest sister, Vivian, is herself a bisexual character who actually has a girlfriend in the human world that she is trying to get back to. And finally, in terms of my book out statistics, this book took me 
me almost seven hours to read. And I read it at about 54 pages an hour. And the most minutes read in a day was 35 minutes, which is surprising to me because I felt like I would have read it longer, but it still only took me like three days to read, so it's definitely a fast one. And the final book that I finished in the month of January that I absolutely loved was book two in the Soldier Sun Cycle, and that is The Fell Sword. This is the one where all of the different pieces finally come together where you can tell the last three books in the series are just going to be like an explosion of events. So again, this one is a little bit slow as well, kind of like The Red Knight, but I would say that there is a lot more action and things happening now because you're more familiar with the characters and the plot in this world and what it involves. So I don't want to go too much into the plot itself because there's a lot going on and it would be very spoilery if I say anything, but suffice it to say I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it just as much as The Red Knight and it was just definitely a page turner. I couldn't wait to see what was going to happen. I've already started the third book, The Dread Worm, and I'm enjoying that one immensely. So definitely a solid, solid series by Miles Cameron, whose real name, by the way, is Christian Cameron, in case anybody wanted to know that. So this book ended up rating five out of five stars. I gave the characters five stars, the writing five stars, the world building five stars, because we definitely got a lot more world building in this book. And I gave the plot itself five out of five stars for an overall rating of five out of five stars, which should come as a shock to nobody. In terms of my statistics, this book took me 17 hours to read and I averaged about 40 pages an hour, which is up from the Red Knight, surprisingly, probably because I was like super invested in the story and wanted to know what was going to happen. I find I read books a little bit faster when that occurs. I'm also a little confused by the book out statistics that say that I, most pages read in a day was 442 and most minutes was 659 because I very much know that that is not the case. I noticed sometimes that the book out app is a little glitchy and I'm thinking that this was one of those times. Um, I definitely did not read 659 minutes in a day. All right, guys, that was it for my January reading wrap up. Sorry if this was a very long and rambly video. I was having a hard time finding my words today, so that was a thing. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely day. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.